Now it's time to do topic seven, which is called atomic and nuclear physics. Uh, this one, if you look at your data booklet, you only get one equation for it. You just get E equals MC squared. It's actually sort of painfully blank on there. But that's okay. There's actually lots of uh, straightforward basics. And uh, so I'm just going to go over a few of the really key things we need to understand. Uh, first of all, it's just a really generic and very simplistic view of the atom. I mean, we're made of atoms. Um, there's atoms all over the place here, but um, in the air. But I'm going to look at a generic, sort of very simplistic version of one. Uh, we know this to be not exactly correct anymore, but close enough. So an atom has a nucleus made of protons and neutrons. Around that orbits electrons. Okay, that's roughly what happens here. So if I uh, look at this, my P, that means proton, N means neutron, and E with a little minus means electron. Uh, that's a very simplistic view. Now, of course, I've drawn the nucleus or the center of the atom super huge. It's actually super, super small, obviously. And there's a very, very big space between that and the orbiting uh, electrons. Now, if we look at these, then, uh, we can look at some basics here in order to try to understand a little bit about uh, what's going on. Uh, one of the things is the notation that we use. So the notation that we use normally uh, goes like this. So normally, I'll just write a generic thing. So x with a little a here and with a z value here, or z if you're American. This is just the element. Okay, this will be the symbol for the element. It could be whatever. It could be hydrogen or helium or gold or silver or whatever you feel like. Um, now, let's just talk about what each of these different letters means here. So A right here, this is the mass number. And Z is the atomic number. Okay, that's important. Um, what this does, what's really key, I think, is that Z tells you which element it is. Uh, so if you look at, um, at a periodic table, for example, uh, the number, the element with a Z number of one, that's atomic number one, so that's hydrogen. And then the next one, uh, number two, well, that's helium, and so on. So Z tells you which element it is. Okay, it tells you which one on the periodic table it is. And the key thing is, is it tells you the number of protons. So P means protons. Well, the mass number, that tells you, uh, that's the number of nucleons. And nucleons are neutrons plus protons. So that's what's going on here, is that the, um, the A number, that's the mass number, and that tells you the number of nucleons. In other words, the number of particles in the nucleus. And since the nucleus is made up of both protons and neutrons, then it contains those. Let me give you a quick little example of what one of these could be. So let's say it's um, helium. Well, helium is the second element in the periodic table. So we say it has an atomic number of two. But, uh, oh, well, actually, let me, instead of doing the but here, let's just do, uh, that sounds obscene. Instead of, uh, instead of, yeah, let's just take a look at this helium here. So helium, it's the second element in the periodic table. Um, and so we write helium. Now the helium and the two are a bit redundant. We don't actually need to say both. Uh, so we can just, a lot of times a convention is just to say helium four is actually what it would be called. You could have, you know, um, carbon 14. So you could have carbon here with a 14 on the top. The reason is that this bottom number here and this are the same thing. So helium means element number two. Element number two means helium. Now you don't have to memorize the periodic table for uh, IB physics. Um, and they're going to still ask you questions like this, but you'll see that they're phrased in such a way that you, you don't actually need it. So that's, that's okay. Uh, this one, for example, now this has two protons in it, and it has a total of four nucleons. So that means, uh, let's see, this is two protons. This is four, uh, but that tells you that's protons plus uh, nucleons. Uh, sorry, protons plus neutrons. So in this one right here, there's actually only two neutrons. So if you want to find how many neutrons are in something, you subtract the uh, number up here, 
by the number down here. So 4 minus 2, that tells you there's two neutrons here. Remember, because this one counts the neutrons plus protons, and this one's just protons. So here it's like you've counted them twice, if you're curious about that. Now we can have actually what are called isotopes. Isotopes have uh, same atomic number, but different mass number. So for example, whoops, uh, same atomic, I meant, I meant to say number. Same atomic number, but a different mass number. In other words, it's got the same number of protons, but a different number of, well, it actually has a different number of neutrons. Because of course it's neutrons plus the original protons. So an example of isotope, oh, by the way, I like the word isotope because, um, well, I like The Simpsons. I don't know if you've ever watched that show. But uh, in The Simpsons, the uh, baseball team is actually called the isotopes. And all this is related because Homer Simpson, uh, he actually works at a nuclear power plant. So they often actually mention nuclear type words. Uh, and so these are isotopes. By the way, uh, it always bothered me when people say nuclear. I know, uh, unfortunately, um, George Bush always said nuclear. Uh, it's nuclear because it has to do with the nucleus, right? It's not called a nucleus. It's called a nucleus. That means a center, right? That's a center or the nucleus of an atom. Well, nuclear physics is all about looking at uh, the nucleus of atoms. So it's nuclear physics. Uh, that's just a little side. But isotopes then? I'll give you an example of uh, two isotopes. Uh, so the baseball team in The Simpsons is called the isotopes, but uh, let's look at this one. So I'll say carbon 12. We call it carbon 12. By the way, it has a little six down here. And we also have carbon 14. So these two, carbon 12 and carbon 14, are isotopes of each other because they're the same element. In other words, the same number of protons. See, same number of, same atomic number, but they have a different number of neutrons. So this one, for example, has six protons and six neutrons. This one has six protons and two more than that. So that means it has eight neutrons. So that's what an isotope means. Now we can also take a look at uh, something else important, which is energy levels. So I'm going to show you those. So if we have energy levels, that's something within uh, atoms here. So let me just write down here. So the electrons, let's say, so they, uh, they get excited in some way. So in other words, they, they're normally absorbing a photon or something or a piece of light. So electrons get excited. They go up in energy level. When they go down, So when they go back down, they emit a photon, in other words, a little piece of light of energy E equals HF. Okay, so I'd better show you a little bit about that one. So. Um, what I mean here is, let's say, maybe off to the side here, I can draw this. So I've got maybe different energy levels here. So maybe I have um, a hydrogen atom. And this right here, this height is going to represent energy in joules or maybe in electron volts. That's another unit of energy. So let's say this, this represents energy. So what will happen is an electron is hanging out at a certain energy level and then it gets excited somehow. So maybe it absorbs a, a photon or something. So it gets excited, so that means it goes, I don't just mean it's like, yes, but I just mean it actually goes up in energy level. And then maybe then it decides to go back down. Maybe there's like another energy level down here. So maybe it decides to go back down. So maybe it goes down here. Maybe then it goes back down or maybe it just goes all the way back down. What this means is that each time this photon goes down in energy, it's going to emit a photon. And that photon, that piece of light, so to speak, is going to have an energy based on this, whatever this difference is. So however many, uh, however much energy there was here, minus however 
energy this was, or whatever energy that was, then that right there would be E equals HF. So uh, maybe I better define this. So E equals the energy, and that's measured in electron volts. We have H, which is just some constant that you can look up, and F equals the frequency of light, and that's going to be in hertz, which means you can actually convert from frequency of light to color. So what this really tells you is that if you've got an energy transition, you've got electrons getting excited and then dropping down, let's say, they kick out a photon of energy E equals HF, which means, that, and remember, F tells you about the color. Remember the uh, wave equation, which is V equals F lambda. That was from topic four. Uh, so that one right there tells you about this right here, about these energies, and it tells you then what color that is. So that explains then what colors of light are possible. In the orientation that I've shown you here, I would actually have three different colors of light being emitted. I'd have some from here to here, that's one energy level. I'd have some that hung out here and then dropped back down, so I'd have that color of light. As well, sometimes it might be possible to go from the top right down to the bottom and skip the middle steps, so I'd have that E equals HF. Do you see how that works? Uh, hopefully that's clear for you, that uh, we can have different energy levels. And remember, these electron volts, those are uh, using units that we used uh, earlier when I was talking about uh, accelerating a uh, an electron through one volt.